It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got a couple teams searching for their first Super Bowl. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans under the lights on Monday night. We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Logan Cook and off we go from Nashville and they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback here comes the Tennessee offense and you see Ryan Tannehill leading them out and one of the things that has really impressed me about Ryan Tannehill has been his perseverance early in his career didn't have the success that he desired had some injuries that slowed his development but he kept working at his craft and now He's a guy that I think you can put a game on his shoulders. Start on the ground, it's Derrick Henry. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Tannehill. It's complete. This is Derrick Henry. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A first down there on a pick up the 25. That's going to be a good matchup for him. Using him out of the backfield and telling those linebackers, hey, you're not only going to have to try and run with him, but you're going to have to try and tackle him in the open field. down carry for Henry and he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards second down certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield their job is to go ahead and get low almost get into a ball sometimes stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole Tannehill's throw pulled in by Woods. 
And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 33. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, we're going to sell the go. Just go. Let's see who's faster. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second and five now. Tannehill. And he's got his man on the out route. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. This drive has been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes. And the last one putting him in the red zone. So when you get play action right here, because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it, go play action and take your shot at the end zone. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Tannehill now to throw. It's complete, Burks. And they're going to get this down inside the 15. It's safe to say the passing game has found a rhythm. He's now 4-4, four four, but might need to be 5-5 five five to keep this drive going here as they face a third down. And maybe perhaps you show a running play, right? Maybe a little play action here to go ahead and let him throw the ball downfield. I wouldn't get away from him flinging it because 4-4 four for four already? I think he's got a good chance of picking this one up here on third down. Tannehill. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up fourth down. They'll run. It's Henry. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. Derrick Henry denied here on fourth down. And this defense holds firm here on the opening drive of the night. So, Charles, they wanted seven on that opening drive. They didn't want to settle for a field goal. Felt like a tone setter. You know, that's what they were looking for because a lot of teams, they, they, they'll march it downfield, and when they kick the field goal, it almost feels disappointing, doesn't it? You have a nice drive. Yes, sir. I think this team decided, guess what? No matter what, we're going for the six. Try and put those points on the board and set them back on their heels. But unfortunately, that mentality did not work out. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 from back at their own 10 yard line. Now Lawrence. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll go out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. And that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he get a good head of steam going. To throw again on second down, Lawrence. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. 
That one a first down pickup of eight. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. Time with Travis Etienne. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Now Lawrence to throw. Flushed out right. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Thrown back across his body. Picked up by Amani Hooker. And the Titans are going to take possession of the football. Bobby, we have another story. Icarus in mythology. That's the guy who flew too close to the sun and had his wings melted. That was our guy right there. He keeps pressing it and pressing it. Finally, on that throw, he paid the price for that turnover. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. They'll have very good starting field position here after the turnover as they search for the first points of the ball game. For the interception, here's Tannehill. And he's got the hook up here. It's Woods. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Simple drag route here. Lined up back left. He tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. From the 22, Tannehill, another targeting catch for Robert Woods. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. From the 10, first and goal. Tannehill. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Here's Tannehill. Touchdown! Robert Woods on the receiving end of that toss from Ryan Tannehill. And the Titans take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, yeah, I give him credit. 
found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point up and good by Bullock, and it's now a 7 nothing game. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with a Robert Woods touchdown reception. Fields this way up at the 17. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others, where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. You know, get this out to the flat for ETM. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Now Lawrence on first down. This complete to Jones. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. He's throwing one interception already, and that doesn't necessarily mean the rest of the game is going to go like that. But it does seem that he's a little bit off in his approach to this one. Yeah, it does. And that was a risky throw right there. You gotta be careful about taking care of the ball, making sure you get back within yourself. I mean, those mechanics that they work on all the time, they're there for a reason. Kind of get back to those and maybe tamp it down a little bit. And he's gonna be taken down at about the 33. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10, down at the 33. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. That would complete downfield to Kirk. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. That's good for 28 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field and just like that, they're gonna be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Lawrence will throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, they were so close. That close to their first points of the game. Just needed to hang on just a second longer, but he couldn't complete the process of the catch through the jostling from the defender. 
line of scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal. Toss left side for ETN. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter. So they're back at the seven now for third and goal. On third and goal, Lawrence. Eluding the pressure right. And he's just going to throw this one out of bounds here. No one to go with it incomplete. Well, it's been a tough go for him. This guy's been driving down the field. But defensively, once he got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. Riley Patterson now on for the field goal. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. Patterson's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. over to their D. Pulls it in at the 13. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Next possession coming up for Ryan Tannehill and the Titans offense. He's been perfect through the air, 9-9 nine nine so far, including that touchdown on the last drive. As his guys start again, first and 10. They begin with Henry, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Here's Tannehill. That's caught, Nick Westbrook Aquino with it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. So they still get the completion even though the blitz was on. But the blitz got there. Does that stay in the mind of the quarterback the next couple plays? That's what you're hoping for. That's what you're planning for. It's a little risk-reward, right? You're leaving your guys on an island back there in man coverage. But you take the chance that you get to the quarterback. And so he gets completion here. Congratulations. Keep coming at him. And hopefully it pays off by the end of the game that you're starting to get to him while still able to cover on the back end. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Uh, uh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead it's knocked harmlessly to the turf. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Back to throw, Tannehill. Trying to improvise. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm. But he was more than happy to dissect him with his legs for that first down pickup. Let's go. 
So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Running left, it's Henry. Down inside the 40. I feel like I can see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Again, it's Henry. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. To throw is Tannehill. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Tannehill to the sideline. Randy Bullock out now for the Tennessee field goal. This will be spotted at the 20, so it's a 30-yard attempt. Bullock's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They go play action with Lawrence. Finds the open target, Arnold. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. And he's left with no option here but to throw it across. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. After the incompletion. 
action here now, third and two. They'll run with ETN. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Just a terrific run there, Charles, from a running back who is so compact and powerful. And that strength was on display there. Yeah, and this is most definitely the guy you want running the football when you need the tough yards on third down. And he moves the chains and then some as he shakes off that first contact. And as they said in the 70s, he just keeps right on trucking. On first down, Lawrence. This is caught. It's Kirk. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Lawrence finds his tight end Ingram. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. Throwing again on second down. Lawrence, that's complete to try to see T.N. out of the backfield. And they're going to move it down to inside the 25. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in the open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there of protecting the ball and picking up a first down. On first and 10, it's ETN. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Here's Lawrence. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Back to the ground with ETN. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Our score, 10-3 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. 
They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. They go play action now. Lawrence. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Riley Patterson now on for the field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Patterson's kick is good, and that'll bring him back within four. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Derrick Henry and the rest of the Titans offense about ready to roll again. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who have been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football, and they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Tannehill on first down. Running the slant, that's Hooper. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Tannehill got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QB loved to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. On first down, it's Tannehill. Escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. This will go to Henry out wide. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. One of my teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He said, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down.
Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here three remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And this is good from 57 yards out. That is bombs away right there. So we've reached halftime here in Nashville, the Music City, with the Titans out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, a look at the next-gen stats for Jacksonville in that first half. And despite the fact that they're down on the scoreboard, they were able to have some success throwing the football in that opening half. But meanwhile, for the Titans, they too did throw the ball as well as they would have liked. And I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Short kick taking it about the 16. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. And this offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here, trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game. And to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. He completes it to Jones. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Four yards remain for second down. Now Lawrence. Looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. ETN up the middle. Down to the 42, second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime makes had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar oh, linemen might have moved. 
And the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still second down. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. ETN once more. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On third down, Lawrence. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. They called the corner blitz, and Roger McCreary, he got in there and earned the sack. So at that time, Charles, a uh, quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, that's when we turn to your and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely, because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. And as we check the next-gen stats, that play lasted just 2.7 seconds from beginning to end. Just not enough time to throw the football. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Amazing, perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. First and ten, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. They give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down brings. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. They give it off here to the tight end. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped 10 yards, first down. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. to work with here from the 13 on first and 10. Now Tannehill. He gets this one to Burks. He'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Ran a perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down.
Back to the ground now. It's Henry. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Here's Tannehill. Go to the right here and finding Burks. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Inside handoff, Henry. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. And a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Keep it with Henry on first down. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. And the busy night for Henry continues. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Well, we know how difficult it is to slow down Derrick Henry. That time they went to the face mask, and, and that's a pretty easy call. They're just trying to figure out any way possible to get him down, but you just have to wonder if that might make him just a little bit madder. He already runs angry, and that's when he's in a good mood. On first down, Tannehill. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I think we've hit that point in the game now where any score you get could be the one that actually wins it. So above all, you want to avoid a turnover that leaves you coming away with nothing. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and 10 coming up. Henry up the middle. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 68 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. First and 10, Tannehill. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Second and eight coming from the 19. Now a handoff to Henry. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. 
from the gun. Here's Tannehill. And he'll find his target. Woods, it's complete. That he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Tannehill to the sideline. Randy Bullock out now for the Tennessee field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Bullock's kick is good. And that one makes this a 10-point game at 16 to 6. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six field oh, goals. Oh, but with six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Short kick taking it about the 16. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now Lawrence, there's Manhurts, the tight end. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Working with his second and four. And Lawrence will throw. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Lawrence to Jones, first down, Jacksonville. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. here and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. That's Jerron Taylor the right tackle. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. A shotgun snap and again the ETN. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. On the move to his left. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. The plan was clearly to challenge them by sending a blitz on second down, but even the extra guys couldn't catch him in the backfield, though. He didn't scramble for it first, but he does get the last lap by evading the blitz and getting beyond the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. This is third and nine. Here's Lawrence to throw. And Ingram hauls it in. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. 
And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified. Big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Now Lawrence to throw. Jones has it, and they're going to move it down to inside the 25. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Straight ahead, ETN. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Now Lawrence on first down, complete to Jones. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Now a first and 10 at the 11. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And he wisely will throw that one away. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Running out of the gun with ETN, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend out third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Here's Lawrence. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities. But as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. Patterson's kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And a short kick taking it about the 16. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. start on the ground it's Derrick Henry and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line 81 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better really as the night's going on it carries like that that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here Charles in the fourth quarter yeah how about that a new set of downs clock continues to move no better way to close out a game than to tap those master dodge you have up front and say guys Keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football, and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass, but it's equally important to know when to throw the football away, too. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. They'll get four back there on the run, but now they're looking up at a third and 12 situation. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. It, yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Over the middle, into the hands of Burks. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Lawrence, throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Lawrence. Throw left side complete to Ingram. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. On second down, a run with ETN. And a 42-yard line here and brought down there. Two yards, good enough for a first. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Now Lawrence. He'll find ETN out of the backfield. Two yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Lawrence. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for nine. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Play action. It's Lawrence. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence. And they hit him as he throws. As this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Titans, they've got the football back, and they've got it in great field position. So the failure to convert, no doubt, really hurts. But this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning. And that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing? stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here. And if so, they've still got an opportunity. Meanwhile, Tannehill's throw is on target to Burks. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. On second down, here's Henry. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and ten they'll run it again with Henry this will be a gain of about eight to the 27 yard line now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts that'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down.
And they will take a knee here. Give to Henry. And he'll go down here at the 12 yard line. 14 yards rushing for him now the ball game. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Tannehill to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. There's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And I think the game balls need to be distributed on the defensive side of the football, and I bet that you would agree. Yeah, if you hold a team under 10 points, that's a job well done, really well done. So I would say game balls for every starter and every key player who participated in this game. Now, see, I, I only like one game ball. You just you're, you're, handing game out, ball? you're handing out multiple, although I set you up by saying game balls, plural. Yeah. But, I, but, I, but I, I like where we're going with this. Though. You say one to uh, represent yeah. like the best player of all yeah. that. And I say multiple so that you keep everyone motivated and involved. You're a man of the people. I'm a man of the people. You, oh, I thought I was the only child. You get a game ball, and you get a game ball. Game balls for everybody.